This episode is all just about Christian. Yes. Having too much fun. <laughs> what up? With the bullet pattern system. I mean, this looks amazing. <laughs> Uh, hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDevs Academy. Welcome to episode 65 of the <laughs> advanced shmup tutorial. Very advanced tutorial where we're doing an amazing shmup and we are working on an amazing pattern editor. Bullet pattern editor. And it's, it's going well. Like it's, we can, we can make, <laughs> there's patterns, we can make patterns. Ooh, ooh, look at this, look at this. We can barf some bullets on the screen. Cool, cool stuff. Today we're gonna to wrap up the pattern editor. There's just like little nitpicks, things, little leftovers that are left, uh, and we're gonna go through them. Um, one thing I want to maybe immediately do is like the combine modifier. So I want to maybe do like a modifier that allows us to combine uh, multiple patterns together. Uh, we cannot actually do that right now. Uh, no, we can't. We all, like all of the patterns that we're firing is just like a single bullet, uh, or like the same bullet just multiplied multiple times. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to include a, f a modifier that allows us to say like fire this pattern and this part pattern simultaneously. Um, and that allows us to layer uh, different shots on top of each other. So when you have a, like a boss fight that fires a whole bunch of different bullets, uh, you don't have to like fire them individually, you can fire them together. And there's like probably really cool stuff that you can do with this. I, I think this is useful at modifier. We're going to see if we're going to use, like with all of those modifiers, we're going to see like, for example, the sum modifier. I'm not sure if we're going to ever need that. If we're not going to need them, we can delete them. Um, but I just want to give us the option. I feel like the combine modifier is a useful option. So let's just do that. I'm going to create like the menu for this. And this is going to be a stupid uh, implementation of that. There is a smart implementation of that. Um, the smart implementation is one where um, you can, you know, you can keep adding new bullet patterns. So it's kind of like the size of the of the modifier is flexible. You can combine two or three and four. Like you, you can add as many as you want. Our our data structure definitely supports that. But uh, whatever. Just I'm just gonna have five. I'm just gonna have five. I'm just gonna have five slots for different uh, modifiers to combine with each other. And if we ever are in a situation where we need more than five, we can m make it bigger or we can make it so that's flexible. We can always come back to it and make it f generally flexible. But for now, I'm just gonna make it so that the combine modifier is gonna have five slots to combine. That, sh that seems like it's enough. Um, and then, uh comb this is like default comb uh it's gonna be the default is gonna be one zero and if there, if there's like a zero in one of the slots that means that obviously we're not gonna do anything okay now let us do the um, let's actually make this the stuff that it's supposed to comb and then, yeah, let's just do like something like uh, something like this for this. Four i equals two to five. Yeah, five. Do end. And we're gonna go if my pad i is greater than zero, then right. And then we're just gonna do something like uh, basically the same thing as sum, right? Yeah. Like we're gonna generate this. And no, uh, actually, that's not gonna be. Uh, yeah, we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna loop through that. Uh, so we're gonna do. We're gonna. It's gonna be optimized later. It's it's fine. I just want to first see it it working, and then we're gonna think about how to optimize it. There's plenty of ways of optimizing this. So uh, we're gonna create this. We're gonna loop through this, and we're gonna go. Add red 
p, right? So we are looping through all of the entries, and if, we, if there is an entry that is not zero, then we're going to generate that entry, that pattern from that entry, and we're going to add, we're going to dump all of the bullets from that pattern onto the return uh, array. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it just <laughs> you don't see it because it, the bullets are on top of each other. What happens if we do, like four? Hmm. What what is a good pattern that does? Yeah, let's go pattern number five. Ah! <laughs> what up? What up? Yes. As you can see, you can combine bullets from. Yeah, so see, now we have bullets from different patterns combined into each other. Easy, easy and good. I'm gonna save that, and that is the combined modifier done. Now, little next little step uh, is gonna be this little angle mod indicator. I kind of like that, I, I, I want that. Um, so the idea is that when we're drawing the, 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 the enemy that is firing the bullet, uh, I want to also sh draw a little indicator that shows us the angle at which we're firing. A little bit late, maybe a little bit late to add this, but I think it's good to kind of like uh, avoid confusion about you know when um, where where a pattern is aimed. So we do something like if fire ang equals let's let's call it my ang, uh, and that is going to be zero, and if fire ang equals minus 99, then that means that we're it's aimed. And in this case, my ang equals, and then we're gonna use this formula to, to aim shots. It's this thing. This is gonna be the formula. We're gonna plop it in here. And then now we're gonna draw a line from the cross line. Uh, this is the center of the cross uh, and then we're gonna do this center of the cross plus sign my ang my ang yeah comma point no it's actually comma this 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 time it's it's, it's comma uh, and then just copy this and it's gonna be y Cosine ang. Um, the color is going to be five. Is it five? Oh yeah, it's it's five. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's see how this looks. Err, this doesn't work. Yeah, because um, it's not n but n spur. Is it? P but it is p spur. Okay. E. Oh yeah, uh, we need to maybe multiply this 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 thing by like I don't know like ten. Let's just make it really obvious. Yep. So you can see now the line is is aiming at at the bullet, and if I press one, it aims straight. Um, I do want to not begin at the center of the cross. Let's do something like this. Oh man, this is this is difficult to read. Let's let's do like a second line here, like a second line solution. This this this. Let's just copy this over. So now the origin and the destination are the same, but now the origin is going to be five and the destination is going to be ten. Let's have, let's see how that works. Maybe a bit more eight. Uh, yeah, this seems alright. Maybe a little bit more. Let's let's go twelve on the destination. Yeah, that's good. So now you can see um, the axis and uh, along which the bullets are fired, and then you can you can set it to one. And if it's set it to one, it's it's going to be straight. If I set it to and press one again, it's gonna be. And so this is now interesting because when you're firing a, a large amount of bullets, you can see the axis along which they are being fired. It's more clear. 
good. Um, angle indicator, Dunsies. Before we get to the minimizing, let us do a test run of our, our system. Something I did in the last um, Doggy Zone episode is I gave you a, the task to uh, copy this pattern. I have like this pattern prepared from Loki Striker, who's working on his beautiful shmup Steel Surge. Steel Surge. And he showed me, he posted this GIF, which is kind of like from the second level of Steel Surge, I guess, from the subsequent level of Steel Surge. It's this beautiful pattern where you can see spirals happening. We all kind of already did that a little bit. It's spirals, but it's like two spirals on top of each other. And one of the tasks in the dog is almost to, to recreate this pattern. I want to try it too now, and that will give us kind of like a hint if our system is flexible enough to make beautiful patterns like this happen. And how we're going to do these patterns, okay? So off the bat, um, how well first I need this three bullet shot. I think this is kind of kind of like a good 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 beginning. So let us do like a base, um, like a spread. Um, is is a small bullet okay? Uh, let's 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 use a small bullet. I don't want to use a big bullet because that will just really fill the screen with stuff. Uh, we're definitely going to do a mirror here. We're going to do uh, three copies like this, and the angle spread is going to be really close something like this maybe a bit wider and oh, that's that's too much already 0.2 it's hard to tell um our bullets are layered a little bit differently than than loki strikers uh, actually if we delete the mirror if we're just gonna have three because we don't need to the the mirror we actually don't need the mirror then we're gonna have like a spread that looks a little bit more like loki strikers yeah, this seems good. Maybe a little bit less, 1.5. Okay, good. Uh, now, something I want to actually do here is this should be a bit of a slower bullet. Maybe we're going to create a different base bullet. We, that's maybe something that might be useful. I'm going to export this real quick. So, um, shift, question mark. Um, it w might be useful to have a shift modifier. We don't have that yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do it, but we, it might be a good idea to do a shift. Um, a shift modifier basically um, does a copy of, of a already existing pattern, but shifts everything by a fixed value. So we have a, you have a bullet and then you do a shift and make a slower bullet. Like a variation of the bullet is a little bit slower. Uh, the fact that it's referential is kind of neat because then you don't have to repeat the, like the, animation and collision stuff. It's got, it just takes the already existing bullet and slows it down a little bit. We can recreate that effect though um, with a spread. So um, uh, we're gonna say one and then we're gonna go from two to two and then we're gonna have speed is gonna be minus 0 0.1, right? Uh, let's, go, let's go really clear. And so now you can see I have created like this and the angle is going to be zero. I have created this slower bullet now, right? And and that is going to be the thing that we're going to reference here. So now we have like this slow, slow spread. Okay. I'm not sure. This may be a little bit too slow. Let's let's speed it up a little bit. Let's go zero point three. Uh, maybe just a little bit too fast. Zero point four. Yeah, this seems good. Okay, so now let us uh, create a new spread. So maybe we don't need the shift because we can re replicate that that behavior with our spread. I I'm not sure, but maybe it might se make sense to just make it so it's a bit more convenient to have like this different options. I don't know. I don't know. Let you let me know if you what you think about that. Right. So now um, pattern number seven is our our, our three bullets. Uh, so we're gonna do seven as the origin. We're gonna do a copy from one to three. The angle is going to be three, three, three. And now we have, we have this, right? So we have this, but now it's not turning. So we're going to create a new pattern. Oops. Uh, by the way, let's, let's export this. Spurred. Um, so we're going to have source nine. Uh, we're going to create 
10 of those. Um, the angle can shift, um, but all, most importantly, also time shifts. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Uh, more of angle separation, yes. And more of a time shift. Actually, less of a time shift. What is happening? Why, why are there so many things happening at the same time? Maybe less of a time shift. Oh, actually, the time, the timing might be might be more, more spacing in time. Yeah, yeah. And actually, we might actually slow down the bullets. Uh, let's make it six. Really slow bullets. Yes, this is better. Um, let's go ten. Uh, I feel like it, it should be closer together. Uh, what if we do make it the spacing really... S okay, so this is good. I mean, this looks amazing. <laughs> I, I don't even care that, that this is not exactly what you wanted. Okay, this, this, is, this is better. We want to have like the slow, slow spacing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Definitely that, but then maybe the angle a little bit faster. Yes. Uh, more of a spread on the individual shots. Um, so something like this. Yes. Okay, uh, it has to turn a little bit faster. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe even faster. No, actually slower, but the, the spacing is a bit closer together. Yeah. Maybe even even slower yet. Uh, faster yet. I'm... Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so see now we want to shift again, right? So it's kind of something that we need a lot. So maybe it would be nice because now I want to have this bullet, this pattern here. I want to this, but I want to have this, but um, faster now. So we're gonna do another sp spurred. Um, I want to have this. No, no, not this. Well, we could take this, but faster, right? Just copy this, but faster. So let's go pattern nine, source pattern nine, from two to two, angle is zero, but now we wanna add something to the speed. So now they're, those are faster, right? Uh, maybe, maybe, that's okay, let's just try this. Actually, let's do a comp, and let's combine pattern 11, and pattern nine. Oh, this is getting good. And this allows us to take this combination, uh, which was pattern number 12, and put it in here. Yes. Now let us let us do a. Um, is it aimed? It's, it's aimed. Let us set it to one, and let us uh, watch this a little bit and see the differences. Yeah, I mean this is broadly speaking the same thing. Uh, we could make it go in a different direction. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean this is the thing. This is <laughs> this is the pattern. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. 
look at this. How would you approach this if you, if that was <laughs> that, you, that 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 hit you? Oh, so good. I would maybe even sh oh, now I I want to tinker around with this. This is this is so good. But yeah, this is this is the pattern that that we had from Loki Striker. I think this looks very similar. Good. Let us export this. Okay, so now that we, we had this going, I'm not sure about the shift. I'm going to leave, it, leave this for now, for later. Mm. Now let us minimize the code. Um, that's something I wanted to do. So this is obviously a um, the make pad. Um, something we, we could do is p1, p2, p3, p4. What is the maximum amount? Like in, in the spread shot, the uh, final one is p P8, so P, uh, no, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're gonna go my pad, we're gonna unpack. I think we did that already, kind of like basically takes an array and then returns all of the entries of the array, comma separated, and that allows us to assign them to different variables very easily. So we're just gonna unpack. Yeah, and that, that's gonna be it. Yeah, yeah. And then so now, every time we're using a my pad here, we can also do like a P2, and that saves us a whole bunch of P3, P4, whole bunch of Whole bunch of um, tokens. Let's try that. Yeah, still works. So we can just now do like a P3, P2, P4, P3. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of replacing. Not going to apply this here in this com combination uh, uh, modifier because here it's um, I am actually ad addressing the individual entries in uh, directly. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's let's try that. Let's make sure that there's no mistakes. Let's look at every every pattern that we have so far. Yeah, this looks correct. Yes. Man, if, if, then, but the problem is like once once your enemy is moving, like this is good for like a stationary turret, but it's really bad for a moving enemy because some of the bullets are coming out so slowly that you get like really weird. But it's good that we have like this um, this movable. Actually, we want to keep it maybe. Yeah, like once once your bullet is moving, it's a bit. They, they get like the bullets are bunching up because they're very slow. But yeah, it's this works. This everything works. Um, Good. Um, so how can okay? So can we somehow simplify this? Probably not. Uh, there is a way of simplifying this kind of like big add um, object creation, but that's something we're gonna do like a like as a pass on, on top of that. Now here on a sum, this feels okay. Uh, we might actually no. This is actually this is actually ideal. This is ideal uh, for the spread. The spread is probably the one that is most best suited for um, simplification. Uh, this is all cool. We could combine these two single variable, but I'm not gonna do that for now because this makes the code very unreadable. But yeah, we could, this all these local statements, um, all these could be like merged into one statement that will save us some, and then the combine, yeah, this is this probably not that much. Is it? Is that? Oh yeah, th this is definitely something we can we can create the make pad, or we can just dump it in here, and then that allows us to get rid of the local variable. Is that something that we can also do something else? Like the inline. Yeah, you can also do this here. And a burst. Instead of having like this intermediate step of creating like a local variable where we store the pattern, we just um, create the pattern 
Oh, but that's spread anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, in a burst, we can make it in a burst. Like this. Uh, but yeah, we can still combine these into, into one statement, but I, I won't do it right now. Or maybe I just, let's just do it, whatever. We're not gonna probably, not gonna experiment with this too much. Um, yeah, so two assignments uh, in one statement. Okay, cool. That allows us to just remove the star here. So that's uh, combined. Now let's, let's, let's deal with this. This is, this is difficult. Okay, so first of all, something I don't like this, this, this one, this I minus, I am I minus one. We could do it here and um, we could do it minus one here, and minus one here. That is two minuses ones, but that probably will be the most efficient way of doing this. Like this, and we can just use I here. Saves us a whole bunch of whole bunch of parentheses. Uh, and this will be zero. Okay. Here's how I want to pull this off. So I don't like how the copy, when we're doing a copy, how that just repeats the code that is happening here anyway. So uh, what I want to actually do is I don't want to generate the pattern twice. When I do a, the mirror copy, I want to generate the pattern once and then loop through that generated pattern. And if there is a copy that I need to do, then I'm going to do the copy using a function that we already have. I have to prepare it here because um, we had that, that function in different in a brain editor. I'm gonna put it in our tools because this is something that we already did. There's a function here, copy list. We have that in a brain editor. That will basically copy uh, uh, an object. It will take an object and create uh, like a duplicate of that object, not a clone, a duplicate, actually like a separate object that just has the same entries, uh, the same values. And we're gonna use that to make copies of the different bullets in the patterns. So we're gonna go through that pattern We're gonna change the speed and weight. We're gonna add that. And then I'm gonna go like if P8 is greater than zero, that means that we are making it a copy. Uh, if I equals, if I is greater than zero and P8 is greater than zero then, and here is where we're making the copy. And that allows us to get rid of this, right? So now we're just making the copy here. And so we're gonna go add red copy list, good copy list, copy list. Mm -hmm. um, P. Now this won't quite work. So probably we need to local P, let's call it send, send. <laughs> okay, it's not Sandra. It's actually not. It's actually let's let's say copy, copy P. Uh, let's make a copy of 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 P. Uh, and then we're gonna go P dot ang. How do we mirror the angle? Yeah, that that don't that 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 won't that that won't work. Um, okay, so let's. Let's do it like this, copy P, copy P. Um, yeah, we need to mirror the angle, but the thing is, um, the angle is um, generated, like the angle shift is already happening when we generate the angle. So what we need to do is um, to get this, the, so we're gonna create the angle without shifting the, we're gonna generate the, the pattern without shifting the angle, and we're gonna shift the angle manually. So we're gonna go p dot ang after we do the clone. We're gonna do p dot ang um, plus 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 equals i divided and uh, multiplied by 
P5. And here when we're doing the clone, we're gonna go P copy P ang plus equals minus P5. This is a bit bit um, dense, but let me let me walk you through and maybe we're gonna see. So we're gonna first of all we iterating a bunch of times. Um, we are repeating this process a bunch of times. Uh, then each time we're gonna go through the loop, we're gonna generate a duplicate of our source pattern. And it's gonna be just a pure duplicate. We're not gonna shift anything yet. And then we're gonna go through all of the bullets in that pattern. And we're gonna shift the speed, we're gonna shift the wait time, and we're gonna add that to our return value. And we're not gonna shift the angle just yet. If we are in a situation where this is a pattern that needs to be mirrored, then we're gonna duplicate that bullet and shift the, the angle in a negative direction and add that. And if this is, and then afterwards, we're gonna return that original bullet that doesn't have the angle shifted yet and we're gonna shift it positively. And we wanna do it after we do that. So the copied bullet um, is still, un has still an unshifted angle basically. We could even do the, Return, it doesn't really matter though. Okay, let's just see if this works. Maybe it doesn't work, then it's gonna be very, oh, this totally works. Do, how many bullets have we created? Oh, still one bullet out there. I think our bullet deletion code is not, not very robust. If you bullet, fire bullets to the side, then it will never get deleted. Four bullets, zero bullets, okay. Yeah, this looks good. Let's see if we can make the, yeah, this looks good. This this is the pattern that we wanted. This is the same, this the same pattern, baby. Ah, oh, man, I can't start, I want to start messing around with the bullets already. Okay, this is good. Um, So it seems like we have optimized this, this a little bit down. If you guys see anything that I still could optimize even better, do let me know. Do let me know. But I think this is so far so good. So, which means our all our bullet pattern is like 236 tokens, baby. And we can still make it, we can still shave off like around 30-ish tokens, maybe, if we're cool, if we're cool. Uh, oh yeah, here's something that we can also do. The, we can define the red in the same line. Cool, 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 cool. Right, so we have minimized this code. So next steps are bringing this into the game and bringing this to, to the brain editor. But I think I'm gonna leave this for the next episode because I think this is kind of like opening a can of worms and there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. So yeah, let us move on to the doggy zone. That is correct, to the doggy zone. Yeah, so the next episode is basically gonna be a big consolidation episode. And this is basically also the challenge for you in the doggy zone, how to bring all this stuff together. We create like, like different systems we have enemy behavior systems and, and now the bullet pattern editors and now we're going to merge all these things together so they're interlinked so they're interlinked and work together and things that we do in pattern edit show up in the game for sure and maybe even in the uh, brain editor and that is going to be the challenge for the dog zone and that's going to be the challenge for the next episode as well and as always at the end of each episode i will say a big thank you and huge shout out to all the people supporting me on this crazy endeavor here on coffee.com thank you so much for your support guys i'm really appreciating and i hope you're enjoying this show i think if you've tuned into a 65 of those episodes you probably do enjoy the show <laughs> And as always, I want to read out a question uh, from uh, one of my supporters. This is from Meats. Um, this was actually a question for the 14,000 subscriber episode. Um, but Meats uh, delivered this question a little bit too late, so I'm going to answer it now. Um, he asks, uh, okay, a bit of a lazy question, but I'd like to know, first computer game you ever played and the first game that you ever made? Um, so I started out gaming on the Atari 130XE, which is an Atari 8-bit computer. The first game that I ever played was, I think, not the 130XE, it was on an 800, Atari 800. Um, and that was Space Invaders, very classic Space Invaders. I was at a friend's house and he had a computer and I never saw anything like this. And it's like, it's like a little TV that you have on your desk. That was really amazing. 
And then they turned on the, the computer and it's like, wait, how I press some buttons and things on a TV are changing? This was mind blowing to me. Because TV for that, you know, <laughs> back in the days, TV was something that you just watched. It, you have no control over what is happening on the TV. It was like something you turn on and something happens. And there's nothing you can do that makes the TV react, right? And then just seeing like a TV image that you can change in real time was mind blowing. It was like, how does that work? Like, the, is it like a call in kind of thing where I do a telephone call and then I telephone to the people that's sending out the signal in the TV? Like way somewhere there's a, you know, the TV station and they're receiving my signals <laughs> and then they creating a new signal and then sending it out over the airwaves so I can receive it with my TV. <laughs> That was, that was the kind of like thinking I did. And also like the visuals were like very different from like I, some kind of weird squares on the screen. Like and they kind of looked like aliens, but not quite, it's, it was crazy. Uh, the first game I made was also on this kind of system. Uh, and I remember it very vividly. I made a submarine game because I was very much into submarine games. And I made a text-based submarine game. It was a text. <laughs> adventure submarine game basically it was not very sophisticated it was like just input prompt and you can say like type in zero to dive type in one to ascend and then you type in zero and press enter and it prints a text on the screen you are now underwater <laughs> and then you could type in one and enter and then you are now on the surface that was the game <laughs> Just type in one and the text would appear on this. Hey, come on. It's it's make-believe. It's what games do. They make you believe that you're underwater. Essentially nothing changed ever since. <laughs> make believe that you're in space, make believe that you are being shot at by alien. Yeah, so that was my the first game I ever did. Alright, so next time around, big changes, sweeping changes. We're gonna bring things together, coming together as one. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.